My name is Rebecca Perlin, and I'm a speech language pathologist at Holland Bloorview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital. Let's talk today about feeding according to developmental level. A common concern that families often raise is, why is my child not yet able to chew foods that other children his age can? And a question we're often asked is, how do I help my child learn to chew and eat more solid foods? The child's developmental stage is more important than their age when it comes to feeding skills. Just like walking and talking, feeding is a developmental skill that follows a specific order. And a child needs to have those early skills before moving on to more advanced skills. This table shows six stages of oral motor skills. So what a child's mouth is doing. And then as you go to the right, what foods and liquids to feed them at each stage. Just like we match motor activities to a child's motor developmental stage, so what movements their body is doing, we should choose food and liquids that match their oral motor development and not specifically their chronological age. So let's talk about the different stages. The first stage is the earliest stage when we start to feed children. We look at their oral motor skills and what do they do at this time? They're sucking. And when we put something near their mouth, we may see a tongue thrust as they push puree or solids out of their mouth. And at that time, we give them only liquids like breast milk or formula. And that's the stage they're at. When we move on to stage two, that's when we might start with smooth pureed or blended food. And at that stage, we see them sucking. Their mouth may start to open when the spoon is approaching. We start to see their tongue better able to move food from the front to the back. And we don't see that tongue thrust anymore. And what do we give them at that stage? We give them smooth pureed foods. If you can see this applesauce, it is smooth, it is pureed, there is no lumps or chunks. It's important to remember that when we pureed food, nutrients are not lost. And that remember how the larger amount of food when we puree it down becomes a smaller amount. So nutrition is not lost when we puree foods. When we think about the next stage, when we move on to stage three, that's when we start to see some beginning jaw movement up and down. We call that munching. The tongue begins to move to the side to bring food to the side teeth for chewing. And so at this stage, we're not going to just jump to chewable foods, but we're going to start by making foods thicker and thicker. So these are thick mashed potatoes. And you can see I can even stick the spoon and it can stand up in it. You can do this with banana or avocado as well. And make sure, though, that there's still no lumps or chunks in it. And we're going to begin to use very dissolvable, melt-in-the-mouth, crunchy solids like rice rusks to be able to work on their chewing skills. If we think about moving on to stage four, stage four is when that munching chew starts to get even better. And we just are seeing the beginnings of rotary chewing, that grinding chewing that we need for harder foods. And the jaw is moving around and round and side to side to crush foods while chewing. The tongue is more easily moving from side to side to bring food to the side for chewing. And lips are open and active during chewing. So we're often seeing food and liquid falling out as they're learning to manage more solid foods. And so what do we see at this stage? We may see very finely soft table foods. So for egg, overcooked fruits and vegetables, this is a piece of pear that's been cooked a little bit and it's very, very soft. You can see I can squish it between my fingers. This is the beginnings of being able to manage more solid foods. We also are gonna to continue to use the dissolvable solids, but we might start using ones that are a little bit more challenging, like O cereal pieces, dissolvable cookies, um, dissolvable crackers to keep working on their chewing skills. As we move to stage five, we call it soft bite-sized. The rotary chewing is getting better, but there's still some munching in there at times. And the tongue is showing that it can move food to both sides. It's more coordinated and it's a little easier for them at this stage. Lips are better at staying closed. There may still be a little bit of mess that comes out, but their lips are better at keeping the food inside their mouth. And what do we do at this stage? We're gonna do bite-sized pieces of soft foods, fish, ground meat, 
well-cooked vegetables or very, very soft vegetables. And this is an example of a very small piece of cucumber um, that you can see that I've cut up. Again, the skin is off, it's nice and soft, but starting to be able to take little pieces. But for now, we're gonna avoid harder to chew foods, foods that really require that grinding chew. And we're gonna avoid mixed consistency foods, even if the food is a little bit soft. So the example I'll give you is cereal with milk or um, noodle soups where there's two textures that make things a little bit more challenging. And that final stage, that stage six, harder to chew foods and mixed textures. So this is when we see rotary chewing be much better established. Lips are mostly closed while they're chewing and most stays in when they're swallowing. We're seeing better tongue coordination and better control. And they're just starting to be able to open bigger and smaller depending on the size of the food they're eating. So smaller for a thin cookie and larger for that hamburger. And at this stage, we can begin to give them regular foods, meats, raw fruits, and vegetables, and bread, and rice. We may still cut food up appropriately, you know, depending on the size of their mouth, but they can manage those textures. And at this stage, this is when we can start introducing foods that have a mixed consistency, like this cereal with milk, where you can see it has the cereal portion as well as the liquid portion. So if we go back to the chart again, you can see that it goes number one to number six, and it helps you to see what comes next. So families often ask, how do I help my child progress? Once we know what level a child is at and what foods are appropriate for them right now, then we can look ahead to the next stage. So if my child is currently eating well at stage three, like this child here with the green line surrounding it, eating thick, smooth purees, multiple solids, then I can look forward to stage four, so I gradually, I might try a few well-chopped soft foods that I know my child really likes. And I might begin to try some new dissolvable or meltable solids for practice. But I'm not yet gonna introduce bite-sized pieces of food from stage five or hard raw vegetables from stage six because that would be too big a jump. And they're not quite ready for those foods just yet. It's important to watch for signs that the food or liquid that your child is given maybe don't match their oral motor developmental stage. And how will you know? Well, the signs will include gagging or vomiting when eating or drinking, maybe some choking or coughing while eating or drinking, spitting out foods, holding foods in their mouth or in their cheek, spitting foods out, holding foods, swallowing or trying to swallow too soon before it's well chewed, refusing to eat, turning their head away or closing their mouth tight. Moving to a food before a child is ready might increase their risk of choking. It might also affect their nutrition and growth and can lead to negative experiences with food. So let's think about what we talked about today. It's important that we follow a child's developmental level when introducing new foods. And we wanna make sure that we do it in a safe way, avoiding situations where we place kids at risk when we give them foods that are too hard for them. And ultimately we want eating to be enjoyable. And we know that if we meet a child where they're at, that they will better enjoy the food they're given and be ready to move on to the next stage. I hope you enjoyed this presentation today and that you found some of this information helpful. Thank you.